Good morning, everyone, and welcome once again to the Pete Delatore Business Hour. We are in day three of the 2015 Entrepreneur Reboot Academy, a.k.a. Herba, and I'm here once again with my co-host, Sally Vialba. Good morning and welcome. This is a one-week, groundbreaking, one-of-a-kind platform via Pete Delatore Business Hour, created to reboot, re-energize, retool business growth for entrepreneurs. We're joined this morning uh, uh, with someone who actually was on the show about five, six months ago and, and did an amazing job. Her name is Carlene Cousins. She a PhD. We like to call her Dr. Carlene Cousins, associate <laughs> professor, faculty director, MS Information Systems at the Chapman Graduate School of Business at Florida International University. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And good morning, South Florida. Good morning. Let me tell you a little bit about Dr. Carlene. Dr. Carlene Cousins is an attorney entrepreneur, business planning, and commercialization expert. She has worked with technology and healthcare companies and government agencies on regulatory data privacy, intellectual property, business and strategic planning, and commercialization issues. She has experience in technology, tourism, healthcare, manufacturing, gaming, and airport industries. Dr. Cousins is recognized for her research on mobile technologies and legal and regulatory issues impacting the use and innovation of information technology. She serves as an expert panelist and speaker in the mobile technologies area. Most recently, she served as a judge for the 2015 Miami Herald Business Plan Challenge. She's a director of the ADAM Think Tank and a technology consulting center in the College of Business at FIU. She is also director of the Masters in Information Systems program. There you go. Good. Welcome again, Carlene. Well, Carlene, can we get your autograph soon? Uh -huh. Well, can I get <laughs> yours first? You know, it's really a privilege to be in distinguished company such as yours and, and, and Sally. I've admired your work, and I think you're doing a great job in, in serving businesses in South Florida. Thank so you. thanks for inviting me. Thank you so much. Uh, well, we're going to start off by uh, letting everyone know that uh, – uh, we like to do groundbreaking uh, uh, things here on this show, and we introduce some new ideas as we go along. And, and uh, mm -hmm. um, Dr. Cousins is going to share something here that I think is really catchy, but it talks a lot about what the topic is today. And, and let me just uh, start with the first question. Uh, Carlene, Dr. Cousins, how, how do you like <clears throat> to be? Carlene is fine. Carlene's fine. Yes, okay. thank you. <laughs> in, in this world that without a doubt is interconnected in so many different ways, what technology should be, and here is the new phrase that we want everyone, in the Entrepreneur's Technology Toolkit. Okay, so to give life to the technologies, the toolkit, I'm going to use the example of a hypothetical export company, which I'll call Export Company A. And... Uh, uh, basically, uh, this company sells a variety of household appliances, consumer electronics, and other household goods to Latin America and the Caribbean. And there's a large uh, technology research company firm known as Gartner, and their research shows that the main drivers of business connectivity and business disruption for the future will be cloud-based cloud applications, mobile devices, big data and analytics, and social media. And the, re the, the, the uh, statistics on the use of these technologies by small businesses are actually very, very interesting. 92% of small businesses are using at least one cloud business solution over the internet. Okay. That's um, a lot of businesses using. Yes. I didn't know the number was that high, to be yeah. honest. Yeah, because, That's astonishing. because mm -hmm. accounting is on the cloud. You know, QuickBooks is on the cloud. Mm -hmm. Payroll is on the cloud. That's so true. so these that. technologies are very, very accessible for small businesses. So companies like um, export company A can use a mix of these technologies as building blocks to create a plug and play environment, you know, which seamlessly connects the different tools and applications to digitize the business processes along the value chain. And and, and you know, they can 
connect to these applications in ways that are different from their competitors to give them competitive advantage. We also know that mobile applications are, are also taking off all the smartphones, all the, the pads. One, obviously, you're looking on at right now. And, yes. You know, we have our phones in front of us here. Mm -hmm. And 60% indicate that mobile applications are critical to their business. Yes, yes, yes. So, you know, because... Almost oh, every yeah. that a phone is actually going to help you in your business, right? But it's also the ability to reach consumers who have these smartphones and 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 can purchase products and services through these devices, and it can also communicate with these companies through these devices. So it's both a mechanism for marketing products and services, and also engaging with your customers. I know that in late uh, uh, 2013, uh, LinkedIn did a study. Why don't you share some of those, uh, some a little bit of that information? Yes, so uh, LinkedIn uh, did a study and, and they basically found out that um, eight to 10 small and medium business enterprises use social media for their business to drive growth. And three in five say that they have gained new customers by using social media. So it's, 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 so how, it's the application of things that are on, on the cloud and in, it helps us to connect with each other. Yes, and they're becoming socially enabled, you know. So it, in, in all these mixed uses that, that, that companies have and they can use to, to play within all of these technologies that we have available now, mm -hmm. it, 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 it makes, I, I would say that whoever is doing that in a constant basis, use, utilizing all these technologies, they really have a competitive advantage over those that don't. Exactly. It's, it's incredible. So how, how do entrepreneurs like um, Company A, Export Company A, establish an online presence in this uh, interconnected world that we live in? Well, we know that small businesses have very limited budgets, but there are, very, there are many affordable website building tools which require very little programming, programming skills that entrepreneurs can use. And they provide customizable website templates with drag and drop capabilities. Uh, these tools come with e-commerce capabilities, so you can set up your online store, search engine optimization tools, so you can optimize the placement of your website in search engines, uh, social media integration, mobile device support, you know, so you can design your, your mobile uh, web app, email marketing, analytics and payment services, and some of them even give you the capability to integrate with logistic providers such as UPS and FedEx. So, so basically, uh, what, it's not that hard to establish a, a website that is uh, mobile-able, and you can also have it uh, on your computer. There's some very core functionality that is available. Um, some at a cost, you know, for of example, course. if you use a, a website builder such, such as Shopify, you know, because their, their features are, are very sophisticated. You, you can create an online store, but also a website for selling on the go. So, for instance, if export company A is going to a trade show or if they have a pop-up shop or some other event, then... It has this feature where, where, where they can support that process on and, the go. And, and um, all these... It's available. We, we're actually trying to to establish the the availability here. It, yes. It's it's available and it's not cumbersome. I know that there's uh, World Press, there's uh, WordPress. Wix, mm -hmm. WordPress. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. WordPress, Wix. I mean, there's a whole bunch of yes. places that you can go. You don't need to have a lot of money, but you do need to establish an online presence mm -hmm. for your and, company. And if you don't want to uh, actually invest the time and effort to. To, to customize these websites, then you can always be an um, Amazon or eBay reseller because they have marketplaces and, and and allow companies to set up storefronts. You know, these are really very good venues uh, for small so, businesses. So there's, there's a lot of choices. And there, yes. there is, and that's what I was going to get to. Thanks for bringing that up, is the fact that as an entrepreneur, we have thousands and thousands of entrepreneurs that are listening to us right now, South Florida, around the country, and around the world, mm -hmm. thinking... They get overwhelmed by so much, and, and then they get anxious that, well, I got to do this, and I got to connect with that, and I got to you know, slow down a little bit here. You know, the thing is that, number one, the good news is you have a lot of choices. You have a lot of resources available to you, and we're not asking anyone to go from one extreme to the other in one day. Yes. All we want to bring light to is that 
you need to be considering this this important part of your business, which is part of our world today, which is technology and being able to be connected and 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 get the right people around you that if you don't have the expertise, they can guide you along the way and take you step by step so that you start to implement and and use some of these, I like to call them gadgets, some of these these things that are available out there. And they're easy. They're easy. They're customizable. Right. We just got to get comfortable. The younger, all the millennials out there, they love it. They're eating it up alive. Folks like myself are saying, oh, something else I got to be doing. Yes. Another gadget <laughs> yeah, I got to be doing. <laughs> you know, we take a deep breath, take a step back, and just take, just start to embrace it. Open your mind because this will lead you to incredible opportunities in the workplace. And with that, I need to go to a break. Okay. We need to go to a break. We'll be right back. We're here again this morning talking about trends and technology and connectivity with Dr. Carlene Cousins, JD, PhD, Associate Professor, Faculty Director, MS, Information Systems at the Chapman Graduate School of Business at Florida International University, of course. My sidekick, Sal Vialba, is with me. We're going to continue this discussion because, again, it's all about being connected, and we want to make sure that you are getting the, all the information you need so that you can start making connections and start to grow your business. We'll be right back. Welcome back, my friends, to the Pete Delatore Business Hour. Today, of course, is day three of the 2015 Entrepreneur Reboot Academy, a.k.a. Herba. The topic today is trends in technology and connectivity. Of course, I'm here with my co-host, Sally Vialba. Our special guest this morning is Dr. Carlene Cousins, Associate Professor, Faculty Director, MS Information Systems, the Chapman Graduate School of Business at Florida International University. And again, we want all of you that are listening this morning to really open your mind. And, and listen to some of these trends, these ideas that are going on. We don't want you to miss out on any opportunities you have locally or globally. And, and technology is such a big part of our lives here this morning. And, and Dr. Cousins, uh, let me ask you the next question here. Once export company A, our, 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 our uh, uh, make-believe company Hypothetical here. Hypothetical company. There you know. go. Couldn't come up with a word. Thank you. I'm a little uh-huh. slow here. Uh-huh. <laughs> Once they've established their online presence that you alluded to a moment ago, Mm -hmm. how should they engage with their customers? How, and I would think, why? Well, why is it's a no-brainer? How? Yeah, well, I start with how, and then we talk about why. So uh, the best way to engage customers is basically through developing a holistic, enterprise-wide social media strategy. And the best practices suggest that companies should create social media embassies online, which are similar to how countries have established embassies in distant lands. So um, an embassy is just an established online presence where customers can reach the, the entrepreneur and interact with the firm. And it's also a venue for the company to market its products. So um, uh, basically, the, the embassy approach uses a consistent firm name in all its social media. For example, Facebook.com, Export Company A, or Twitter.com, Export Company A, and so on. So you have the same name name different um, across all social media. That's a great that's a great point and something I've experienced and Mm -hmm. some changes I'm making right now is to be more consistent because that's how you can develop your brand. Exactly. Recognizable brand that's that people can make all the connections there. And of course we're talking about connectivity. And it's easier to find as well. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you engage them? Once you've created these embassies, then the next step is to, you know, uh, maybe have a promotion through social media or run polls or giveaways, contests. These embassies can also be used to provide customer support. You know, I remember I was on an eight-hour flight on Delta and ended up in a, a seat that was also uncomfortable. And then I tweeted Delta and... And they changed you? They changed my seat for the return leg. So, oh, wow. you know, through a tweet. Companies are listening to social media to, to, to give support to customers. I know that that um, in my previous life when I was in banking, we used a lot of uh, CRM tools or customer relationship tools mm-hmm. and uh, like uh, Salesforce. It, we used Salesforce a lot. It was a fantastic tool for the, the 
the sales force yeah. of, of the company. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, in there, you had the ability to really connect and keep the conversations that you had with, that we had with our clients in one location in the cloud. And, and, and I, I, what I loved about it is that anybody could come in and pick up where I left off and uh, my clients were always served. And, and I believe that not a lot of people are being aware of what Salesforce is, or, or mm -hmm. and that's a, as a tool, of course, right. to, for, for customers. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so Salesforce is a customer relationship management tool. Like uh, many others out there, by the yes. way, we're not promoting Salesforce oh, no. on yes. air. There are many other programs out there. Like, and some of these others are yes. Sugar CRM, Hub, HubSpot, Microsoft HubSpot, Dynamics. Yes. You know, and they've really evolved in a way to, to manage customer relationships and to connect to them in new ways. So I can give an example for entrepreneurs. You know, um, a call comes in to export company A, and if the caller has an account with this entrepreneur, then the number that the call came from, for example, it, it, it comes through a Google mm -hmm. ad or through eBay, comes up, all their contact information comes up or previous interactions with the company comes up, any outstanding customer service issues also comes up, you know. So, And these products are also cloud-based, very affordable, very accessible for the entrepreneur. I think that, again, the message here in this part of our conversation today is, is and, I, and I love this, the, using the embassy approach mm -hmm. to social media and I, all of your marketing using a consistent name, uh, one name, one brand that, that becomes identifiable by the marketplace. Easy to find and look up, easy Reachable. to remember. Yes. And when they see you, when they hear you, they make the connection that we're talking about yeah. here. And, 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 you know where to, and then engage with And you. then engage engagement, with, absolutely there. You you said uh, something earlier in, in, in uh, the documentation that, that we have on, on the research. Uh, what is the Internet of Things? And okay. uh, how is it relevant to a business such as uh, Export Company A? Right. So, you know, the Internet of Things is an emerging trend. It's the idea that all the devices in the world will eventually be connected to each other through the internet and communicate with each other for easier control and access. So a popular example is milk cartons with sensors sitting in a smart refrigerator that will send signals to the homeowner or to the grocery store when they're almost empty so that that's, the homeowner can huge. either go and get some more milk or... A, a, automatically use their smartwatch to place an order because maybe the notification was sent to their smartwatch to or to have the store deliver the milk you know so that is that is huge you wouldn't think that that's going on we're and making it's going the, on right we're now. making all these guys smarter so we get dumber <laughs> well, at least we don't have to think anymore. We have well, all these smart you, gadgets, so we, the less we think, no, I'm, I'm kidding, of course. But well, I like to think of it as not thinking about the routine, mundane things that Correct. make life a drag. You mm -hmm. know, I think you're being smart by utilizing yes. those, those gadgets. I mean, yes. that, that's really where the smart well, part comes I, I in. Was, I was listening in on on a technology uh, symposium that was going on in uh, in uh, San Francisco, I believe, a uh, couple of. Uh, days ago and uh, they were one of the things that they said was in 2020 we as individuals were going to be connected with minimum of 26 devices mm -hmm. and and you wouldn't believe I mean I didn't believe it and when I started looking at it you know we have our tablet and we have a f our phone and we have our computer our laptop and then don't we forget have our the wearables yes we have our, our, our smart watches. watch and then from our watch Fitbits. like bits Imagine, you, like you said no. right now, from your watch, you're connected to your refrigerator. Yes. You're connected to, to the alarm in your house, to the, the air conditioner, to the, the car, open and close your car. You know, there's so many things that we're connected. So if you are not connecting your business to all the customers or potential customers that are out there, if you're not connecting your business to your uh, sales force, to your staff, to yourself, to your vendors, you're missing out on a great opportunity to grow your business and you're missing out on the competitive advantage of those who are actually doing this well the, along the lines you're also becoming much more efficient in your business because by mm -hmm. becoming more efficient then you have 
time to focus on and look for opportunities. Right. Because we get caught up in just putting out fires every day. If we can embrace technology Mm -hmm. and all the things we're just talking about today to first and foremost become a more efficient company. I think if, if we have an organization that, that's, that's running smoothly, then we as entrepreneurs and our team around us can be focused on what the new opportunities are. We can be l- doing market surveillance and not be cut up in the mundane, everything, everyday thing that, yeah, of that drains our energy. So basically, there are two technology strategies that companies can pursue. One is the stay in business strategy, where you just acquire technology to Keep up with your competitors because that is what they're doing, you know. Okay. And if you don't do it, then you, you're yeah, going you to die. Won't, you won't stay in business, correct? Uh, the second strategy is to use technology to compete. So even though these tools are, are widely available to everyone, including your competitors, you know, there are tools out there that allow you to build a custom module which fits your proprietary business process. And okay, then, so it's customizable right, to, to your business and what right. you do, correct? Uh, you know, and that will give you the competitive advantage, and then you just p- plug it into the other building blocks of technology that are widely available, you know, on the cloud, mobile, and so on. And when you so, have that that information, and, and I believe that this is this is in the lines of what you're talking about, you have your data in the cloud of whatever you have on sales and then your technology department, if they have to do some, some kind of uh, a backup or help, if you're selling anything that has to do with, uh, with uh, support, uh, you're also connected to your vendors. Right. You can request a, a, a shipment online. They can come. You can already know if your inventory is low, mm-hmm. if your inventory needs changing. Yeah. All these things are on the cloud and, and they could all feed each other. Yeah. So let me give an example of, company export a and how they could use the internet of things you know so um all their sales as as you were saying financial information supply information logistics devices equipments customers vendors and so on can be connected to this internet of things and if for example they're exporting a batch of smart refrigerators every device an application and piece of technology that's in the supply chain um, can provide real-time information as those refrigerators f- flow from the com- export company A to the shipper to the customer. And then when it gets to the end consumer who's using this refrigerator, once that refrigerator is connected to the internet, then they, beca- be- they begin to learn about the customer behavior as they use that refrigerator. And it okay. provides opportunities to service the refrigerator, there upsell you go. and cross-sell other products and services. Depending on notifications their use. from the customer. You know, the, the, that refrigerator can communicate with uh, the consumer's wearable device and so on. So it's incredible I, I, I how think that, is. That, that, that the more you look at technology, the more the opportunities are there. Mm-hmm. And, and I would make a suggestion to all of our entrepreneurs that are tuning in this morning is to, is to allocate some part of your time, whether it's once a month, once a quarter, and just have a meeting that is brainstorming on how to use technology, how to use what is available out there to A, have a more efficient business and so that you can stay in business. business. Correct. But we yes. all know that all of this is about thriving, about growing. We don't want all of you to just stay in business. We want you to grow your business because if your mindset is just staying in business. You're not going to be around much longer. So first, first thing you got to do is stay and make sure that you don't have any leaks in your systems and you're using all of that as available. And of course, you want to grow from there. So again, my suggestion is take one meeting per month every quarter and just make it a brainstorming meeting about technology and how your company can utilize everything that's out there. Of course, today, my friends, is day three of the 2015 Entrepreneur Reboot Academy. The focus today is trends and technology and connectivity. I'm here with my co-host, Sally Yab, and our special guest is Dr. Carleen Cousin, Associate Professor, Faculty Director, MS Information Systems, Chapman School, Graduate School of Business at Florida International University. What an expert. It's an honor to have her here this morning. We're going to go to a traffic break and a Bloomberg update. 
And on the other side of that, we will continue with this very insightful conversation today. We'll be right back. All right, everyone, we are back with the second half of the Pete Delatore Business Hour. And of course, we are in day three of the second annual Entrepreneur Reboot Academy, a.k.a. Herba. Today's topic is trends in technology and connectivity. And of course, uh, my co-host Sal Viaba is by my side here, and we have been talking to uh, one of the top experts uh, in technology. That's Dr. Carlene Cousins, Associate Professor, Faculty Director. Long title here, but all well worth it. And uh, Sally, let's continue with the conversation. Well, welcome back, everyone. And um, Carlene, you know we've been talking about everything that uh, – our hypothetical company, export company A, has to do in order to establish itself uh, in, in, in the working environment. You know, have a website, have establish a social media presence, and uh, utilize the cloud for uh, recollection of data and uh, to have their, their sales force and their inventory and all these things connected with each other. And though that is hugely important, what happens to the other end? What happens to running your back office, that mm-hmm. back part that actually is the basis for everything that's happening in the forefront? Mm-hmm. So when we speak about back office, we're talking about um, functions such as accounting, payables, receivables, payroll, uh, human resource management, and so on. So, so the good news for entrepreneurs is that there are free products out there that allow you to, to digitize these processes. One that I can recommend is Wave Apps um, for small businesses. And, but a word of caution, even though it's free, a freemium product, there's some premium services available, such as direct deposit for your payroll and credit card processing and so on. Who would have thought that, that actually you can utilize all this uh, interconnected technology to be able to handle human resource management mm-hmm. and payroll and, and all these things that we used to do it before, m- basically manually. I mean, who it, it was something or, that, that needed supervision or there constantly. were applications that only large businesses could access. Correct. But now they're Correct. becoming very accessible and, and for it's entrepreneurs. A, and it's another tool that the small business can have that actually helps them uh, not incur in a lot of cost, yet be efficient in their workflow and in their workload and be able to keep up with with the day-to-day business in a more Mm -hmm. efficient way Mm -hmm. and that's that's an important thing to do you know so i i in my previous life uh, i saw a lot of uh, companies that were small and medium sized and they uh they basically were scared to go into this technology uh optimization for their business because they thought they were going to lose control Uh, I, I, it would be remiss of me not to mention the, the, the reasonably priced data analytics and reporting tools that are out there for companies to make sense of their data. You know, all these activities via websites, mobile apps, social media embassies, and so on generate large amounts of data. And this yes, is a phenomenon correct. which we refer to as big data. So <laughs> what do you do with this data? So... Um, and these tools are actually designed for people with little or no data analytics skills, you know, so it makes it more consumable for the small business. That's good. And it gets so them one out example there. is Google Analytics. Um, you can use Google Analytics to analyze your visitor traffic, understand where your customers are, wherever they have sold refrigerators in the world. They can use dashboards to identify those customers. Uh, you can understand why your customers abandoned your products in your shopping cart. And once you begin to gain these insights, then you can personalize and tailor your marketing strategies and site content to these customers for maximum impact. I think, again, as I'm I'm, I'm listening to this, and and I'm in a perfect place to do this because I'm not a millennial, obviously. Mm -hmm. And and, and for me, I I think it's it's about, I get the biggest challenge that most human beings have is change yeah you know we live in a world where we're comfortable we're in a comfort zone we're used to something whether it's to our benefit or not it's the familiar zone and and today so many entrepreneurs so many that have been out there for years and years and years it got started 20 30 years ago when technology wasn't i mean without a doubt not even close not even at one percent of what it is today 
is to again the first step is open your mind consider this yes and right. and and because there's so many ways that your business can really grow where you can maximize opportunities and so much of it is connected to technology and we want all of our entrepreneurs this morning tuning in to number one open your mind and understand that it is hard to make a change and sally alluded to they're, they're afraid to lose control of course yes. we're afraid to lose control because we don't understand what it means and what it can do but actually, you might be gaining more control. Of course. Exactly. That's exactly that's, that's what it exactly is. That's exactly it. Yes. By, by letting go, you, you control better. And, right, yes. And you have a better, better handle. Better decision making, better handle on your company performance, what your cu customers are thinking of, how they're behaving. So, you know. A how, lot to, of how to manage your, your staff and how everything is going. I mean, that part about human management is crucial. <laughs> It's mm -hmm. crucial, especially mm -hmm. if you have a, a, a workforce with you that is that it's larger, and uh, it helps you be on par with the new uh, laws and, and everything that you have to be exactly. specific on. So that's that's a good a great tool. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, of course, we have our dear partners FIU College of Business, who are such a major part of what we do here, and we want to now bring to the forefront. Uh, FIU and the things that this institution is doing to promote and help grow entrepreneurship. We just had good news a couple days ago. It's been ranked as one of the top uh, business schools for undergraduates in the country. Yes. And this is a big reason. International business. International yes. business. Yes. The things Amazing. that, because of your participation and the things that you bring to the table, mm -hmm. how is FIU specifically helping entrepreneurs become equipped for this new interconnected world? Okay, so one of the hats that I wear is the director of Atom, and Atom is a faculty technology consulting practice, which provides consulting services in all of these areas that we discussed today to businesses of every size, whether you're a small business, a startup company, you know, a, a large business, we offer these services. Um, and Atom stands for analytics technology and operations management. So if you're an entrepreneur or business that needs guidance in reimagining your business and developing a digital agenda, please contact me. My email is kcousins at fiu.edu. And for those of you who are interested in pursuing uh, further education in the information systems areas, we have many undergraduate and master's programs um, that you can also pursue. We have our um, a bachelor's of business administration in information systems, and we have our master's in information systems, and we also have a master's in health informa informatics and management systems. I love this terminology, digital agenda. Yes. You know, you would just think, you know, we got to get better at understanding computers and mm -hmm. technology, digital agenda. Yeah. It's, it's really great. We got a couple of minutes left here, and, and we flow through a lot of these uh, important aspects and, mm -hmm. and, and really going over some very interesting statistics and, and things like that. Uh, uh, a message to our listeners, Dr. Cousins, what would you, what one thing, this is a loaded question, would you like to share? as a parting words with our listeners this morning? Uh, okay, there's so many things that I... That's why it's a tough question, <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, at, at least in, I in a sense think of, of... What would, what would you tell... Uh, what would you tell our entrepreneurs that are listening out there? What would be your best advice to guide them into this technologically bombarded world? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, now that you have a, a, a good idea as to all some of the technology solutions that are available to you, sit down carefully and develop a business strategy, a business plan for your business. And think of how you can align some of these information technology solutions to your business strategy. That really is the key to competitive advantage. And, and put that at the top of that list, yeah. how you can truly utilize the technology that's available yeah. today. You know, the, the key really is strategic technology business alignment. You know, maybe um, you don't need the latest technology or the most expensive technology to be competitive. You just strategic, need... Strategic, one more time, what was that? I love that. Strategic, yeah, that strategic 
technology business alignment. Beautiful. Absolutely love that. Great. Hey, thank you so much. No, thank you. This has been terrific. This has been great. Thank you so much. Such a pleasure to be here. Terrific. Uh, so again, uh, Dr. Carleen Cousins, uh, as you can tell, a um, local gem here in South Florida. She does amazing work with the university. She's got a wealth of knowledge. And what's really, for me, at least particularly so many of you probably that are entrepreneurs out there, she brings it down to layman's terms so that we can really understand because it can get real technical when you're dealing with technology. So we really thank you for not just giving us the information, sharing it, but the way that you, sh the, the way that you communicated the information, which is a key there. So thank you very much. And uh, you're always welcome to come back to this I program. I certainly will so be much. back. <laughs> All right, we're going to go to our final break. But on the other side of that, a recap of what went on today and forward looking to tomorrow and to Friday as we are doing the second annual Entrepreneur Reboot Academy.